When a guy explored an abandoned zoo, he spotted a strange shape floating in a murky water tank. In a long abandoned wildlife park in southern Australia, there is an enormous tank filled with a murky green substance. This liquid is known as formaldehyde, and in large doses it's said to be carcinogenic. But that's not the reason for this tank taking the internet by storm. In fact, it's what's lurking within this liquid that's proven so compelling. Once upon a time, the wildlife wonderland giant earthworm museum in Melbourne, Australia, pulled in hundreds of thousands of visitors per year. But in 2012, the animal park closed down forever. While all of its natural inhabitants were recovered and rehoused, a single airy relic was left behind. And six years later, a YouTuber discovered the last vestige of the park for himself. Wildlife Wonderland, which is situated at Bass, close to Western Port Bay, was opened by a real estate professional named John Matthews in 1985. As well as its giant worm display, the park featured areas for koalas and wombats, plus a cafe and restaurant. And the exhibits were popular. In total, around 350,000 visitors flocked to the tourist attraction annually. In the wake of the park's success, Matthias sought to sell it on, and that's exactly what he did, handing wildlife wonderland over to a group of Chinese investors at the turn of the millennium. The facility later changed hands again, but it eventually ended up being closed down altogether. It was Australia's Department of Sustainability and Environment, DSE, that ultimately sounded the death knell for wildlife wonderland. Indeed, according to the DSE, the owners had evicted the park's operator for attempting to run it without the necessary license. As a result, the park was forced to close its doors for good in February 2012. The DSE supposedly gave the operator plenty of opportunity to get the required license. However, Ryan Inkel, a spokesperson for the department, spoke to Australia's ABC News in 2012 about the matter. He said, there were also a number of visits of our wildlife officers to the park to talk to the operator, to assist with getting that license. But he wasn't in the place and didn't obtain a license. Alongside those administrative issues, the park was also plagued in its later years by allegations of staff mistreating animals. At the time of its closure, the DSE was apparently investigating these reports, the 130 animals living in the facility, meanwhile were transferred to Hillsville Sanctuary a zoo in rural Victoria that specializes in native wildlife, with the help of the RSBCA. Today, the entire complex lies abandoned, but it hasn't been totally devoid of visitors in the years since it shut. Indeed, haunting images of the decaying park have frequently circulated online, and there are clear signs of squatters having set up there in the bones of what was once called Wildlife Wonderland. In 2018, urban explorer Luke McPherson ventured into the park, filming his journey through its abandoned rooms and exhibits. In the nearly 29-minute video, it's clear to see just how decrepit the one-time tourist attraction has become. Dirt and dust have settled on almost every inch of the complex, with much of it falling into disrepair. Even the entrance to the facility has become unkempt, with outdoor pounds resembling something closer to swamps. In the clip, as McPherson approaches one of the buildings on the property, he is greeted by the sight of a dilapidated porch, with a sign pointing to the long-defunct wombat habitat. Debris litters the decking, which is surrounded by damaged fencing. McPherson then continues into the first room, which, according to a lopsided sign, was once a nursery for young orphaned wombats. A fur-like material appears to line the ceiling, 
while the rocky walls are covered in graffiti and lazy scrolls. It's a sorry sight, but still easy to imagine that it was once a thriving home for the animals. As MacPherson and his companion delve deeper into the complex, they come across several more artifacts of the park's history. For instance, photographs of its one-time inhabitants still line the walls of the enclosures, with accompanying information for visitors. Meanwhile, rocks circling the enclosures paint a vivid picture of kids clambering up for a better view of the animals. It's not just the buildings that once housed animals that have fallen into disarray. However, as MacPherson and his friend continue their tour through the complex, they come across a number of rooms that might once have contained offices or perhaps living facilities. It's difficult to determine from the footage because each room is a shabby, disorderly shadow of what it might once have been. Furniture lies strewn around many of the rooms, from desks and shelving units to couches and wardrobes. According to MacPherson, the current inhabitants of the fixture are possums, which appear to have made themselves at home in the facility. But they are not the only ones, as the large number of mattresses scattered throughout the abundant sanctuary suggests. In fact, there are hints of squatters having taken up residence in the abundant complex. In one room, MacPherson finds discarded food packaging dated January 2017, while a fridge elsewhere turns up milk dated April 2016. While the urban explorers don't actually come across anyone living there during their visit, it's clear that people have in the past. From there, things start to get a little creepier. In another room, MacPherson stumbles upon a trough of discarded children's clothes, a baggy, hairbrush and toys. A magazine among the piles of items places them to 2015, three years after the park closed, suggesting that a child, and perhaps a family, inhabited it at one point. However, that's not even the strangest thing the deer inadvertently discovered during their tour of the facility. Indeed, seemingly unbeknownst to them, MacPherson and his companion are about to venture into a room with wildlife wonderlands only remaining attraction. And it's that part of their video that has subsequently captured the attention of a global audience. Thanks to his incredible discovery, MacPherson's video has since been widely shared across the web. In total, it's racked up more than 14 million views since it was first published, along with tens of thousands of comments. And going viral has only helped to draw more attention to the abandoned, once forgotten animal park. Among those comments were many shocked reactions, particularly at what the pair eventually ended up finding. Nonetheless, the rest of the video elicited some surprise from viewers, too. One person wrote, they closed it and they literally just dropped everything and left. I can't believe there was still food in the fridge and old family pictures. But while there is something inherently creepy about any abandoned park like this one, there is something far creepier awaiting the trespassing filmmakers. Indeed, when they first set foot on the property, they probably didn't expect to stumble across one of nature's greatest predators. But that's exactly what they found as they entered one room. In the video, as the camera pans around, we see signs on the wall referring to a mouthful of teeth and the Phillip Island giant. Then, MacPherson shifts his gaze upwards and exclaims loudly, What the hell? Can you guys see that? There, floating in a tank of green liquid, is a great white shark. Fortunately for the pair of explorers, the beast isn't alive, but its spine-chilling silhouette is almost enough to instill a modicum of fear anyway. After seeing MacPherson's YouTube clip, vice writer Don Kransky headed to the abandoned wildlife park to see the shark for himself, armed with painfully expensive gas vapor respirators. To protect himself and his friend from the formaldehyde within which the creature floated, he immediately found what he was looking for. It was initially hard to make out the shark. 
Kronsky wrote for Vice in 2019, but we let our eyes adjust and its shape emerged, silhouetted by light pouring through a hole in the roof. While the formaldehyde wasn't always green, it had turned that was as a result of damage to the tank. It's a big murky tank because the filters haven't been running. One visitor to the center told local newspaper Philip Island and San Remo advertiser in 2019, you couldn't get into the shark, though, because the glass is two inches thick. Although there are formaldehyde vapors coming out of the perspex lid, it's a nice ore. Yes, the shark tank had unfortunately fallen into a similar state of disrepair to the rest of the building. McPherson told the Seven Network in 2019. The tank was huge and in bad condition, with a rusty metal frame and smashed panels of glass and trash thrown inside. As a result, he could only linger in the room for a minute or so before the noxious odor from the fumes became too much. The shark, which has since been dubbed Rosie, wasn't originally intended to be a tourist attraction. In fact, the more than 15-foot Great White had simply eaten her way into a pan of tuna in 1997 and had to be put down to protect the divers operating there. Eric Cutts, a local historian, told the Port Lincoln Times in 2019, the argument to kill it was that five divers and several other companies working in the area were at risk. Rosie was then stored in a freezer by the Lukin family, who owned the fishing nets she had been caught in. Shortly after, ecotourism complex Seal Rock Sea Life Center, now known as the Nobis Center, expressed interest in purchasing her for display. Ultimately, however, the owners decided that they didn't want a dead animal. Instead, Wildlife Wonderland stepped in to acquire the shark. Perhaps unsurprisingly, transporting the more than two-ton creature to Bass proved problematic for the owners of the animal park. Indeed, it was a huge logistical undertaking, necessitating the construction of an enormous steel frame, which was then placed inside a freezer truck. But when the shark arrived at the state border, the South Australian government impounded the vehicle. According to Wildlife Wonderland employee Max Bryant, the shark was confiscated due to an ongoing missing persons case. A woman had gone missing on a beach and they thought she may be in the shark. He told the Phillip Island and San Remo advertiser. So the shark was taken to the South Australian Museum, where it was thawed and dissected, but the woman wasn't found in it. When the investigation of Rosie had concluded, she wasn't put on ice again. Instead, she was put in formaldehyde inside a tank created specifically for her. She was then cured in the solution over a few months. Through this period of time, her stomach started to become misshapen and consequently had to be packed with polyester fiber. All in all, bringing the shark to wildlife wonderland cost the park around $500,000. The operation didn't end when Rosie arrived at the animal park, though. Indeed, the owners had to construct a new room for the shark, then take out the roof and use a crane to drop her in. Meanwhile, a concrete bunker had to be installed underneath the building to account for any potential formaldehyde leakages. The tank, meanwhile, required perpetual filtering and monitoring. At first, all of the time, effort and expense seemed to pay off for Wildlife Wonderland's owners. The park began exceeding its regular visitor numbers, with people flocking specifically to see Rosie. During that time, she was the biggest shark ever to be preserved. Naturally, she became the focal point for a full exhibit on great whites. Over the years, Matthews has had plenty of calls asking him to revive the shark display. However, as it was a logistical nightmare to bring Rosie to the park in the first place, moving her again would be a massive job, as he put it to the Philip Island and San Remo advertiser. It was a vibrant attraction, so I shudder every time I go past, he said. I've never been back there since selling it. 
Not everyone has stayed away, though. In fact, in the wake of McPherson's video, people reportedly started flocking to the site. Despite local police telling the public to stay away or risk trespassing charges, vandals nevertheless encroached on the property and attempted to smash Rosie's tank. While they didn't succeed in breaking through the three-inch glass, they cracked it enough that the dangerous carcinogen inside began seeping out. While formaldehyde is generally in the air we breathe, it's at extremely low levels. As such, it's not really a danger to anyone except those already most susceptible to breathing difficulties. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, however, high levels of exposure to formaldehyde have been linked to lung and oral cancers. Furthermore, exposure to the substance can also result in conditions such as pneumonia and dermatitis. And in enclosed or poorly ventilated areas, it can even kill through suffocation. All that said, in 2019, an EPA Victoria spokesperson told news.com.au that it was aware of the shark and tank and did not consider them to be hazardous. As word of Rosie began to spread, concerned campaigners set up a Facebook page dubbed Save Rosie the Shark, attracting thousands of followers. And it seemingly worked. By February 2019, Wildlife Wonderland's owners had arranged for the shark to be taken to Crystal World, a nearby center housing the world's largest collection of crystals, gems and minerals. Crystal World is now adding Rosie the Shark to its prehistoric journeys exhibition center, following an extensive restoration process to her damaged tank. The move was set in motion after Sharon Williamson, an employee at Crystal World, spotted the ferocious creature on her Facebook page. Not long after, she began campaigning for her workplace's owner to save the shark. Otherwise, she was going to go to landfill, Williamson told the Herald Sun in 2019. It was quite logistical, getting it out here and the empty in it. However, according to Tom Capitani, director of Crystal World, Rosie was in surprisingly good condition, especially given that she had been abandoned for years. Now, the center is attempting to preserve the shark in glycerin for centuries to come. I told my staff, go and save her, I don't care what it costs, just save her. Capitani told the Port Lincoln in Times, I couldn't see such a beautiful animal, dead or alive, destroyed. Indeed, it seems the Facebook page did the job, as its founder Trent Hopper told the Daily Mail in 2019. It's such a great outcome, he said. Australia rallied together to save Rosie and get her a forever home at Crystal World. For Capitani, saving the great white shark was about preserving her past, and that includes the damage her tank suffered from vandals at Wildlife Wonderland, which will be left untouched. So now, after years of languishing in an abandoned park, Rosie will finally go on display once again, with no charge to visitors. Any money raised from merchandise sales, meanwhile, is said to be donated towards shark conservation and study, a fitting continuation of this creature's incredible story.